In this video, we're looking at the IntelliGel ZeroScope 1U. So this module is super simple, but it actually has more functions than I even realized when I initially got it. So today I want to give you a quick tour, show only be a few minutes, and we're going to get through all the core functions. So first off, what you have is a simple functions of a uh, scope here. So I've got a simple triangle wave going in off of Pam's off screen here. And uh, basically I can see that here on the scope. Now, uh, before I plug in a second one, which will also show up there as well, I'm gonna show you a couple things here. So uh, if I click, I can first change the time scale of this from you know, 50 milliseconds to 100, you know, and I can kind of change my time scale. And that's just by clicking this encoder once, I'm just gonna switch. Now I'm in choosing uh, you know, how, what's my voltage? Am I looking at a 10 volt scale, a five volt scale, 2.5 volt scale? And so for this particular one, um, with where I've got this attenuated, it looks like we can put that at the 2.5 scale. Um, and then what I have here is a channel two as well, where you have that same exact thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a channel two. And uh, here I've got a saw wave coming out of uh, another dope for oscillator down here. And uh, so you're gonna see the PAMS is first of all, it's only a positive voltage. The uh, coming out of the dope for, we have a positive and negative, just so where that's at. But again, I can also, I can now click through channel one, channel two. So I can see I can make channel two. Uh, let me actually unplug channel one just to demonstrate. But uh, again, you'll see that now, like I can just in channel two, change my volt size um, and what is my range that I'm looking at here. So that's uh, a five volt look. So um, really cool things there. So pretty simple, you know, you've got a scope for two channels. And then if I wanna listen to one of those, I just patch into the output of this here and I'll bring up my mixer. Boom, I can just hear that dope for uh, noise there. So really straightforward, really simple, but I'm not gonna put you through too much noise here at the moment. Now, some other um, interesting things. So if you hold down this encoder, you're gonna get a menu on the right. And um, so this is basically gonna show whether you trigger on the front end, uh, or basically like where that is triggering from. I have this currently set in the default to just triggering on the rise side of the uh, trigger of one. Honestly, I don't think it's a feature for too many people. It's going to be a huge concern. Um, you know, maybe you'll you'll use that if you want to get really into kind of specific looking with a scope. But for the most part, I don't mess with that too much. But what is um, really cool to see here is you have this channel one where I can now take channel one and I can kind of elevate it to the top of the screen. Then channel two and kind of offset that to the bottom of the screen. So now I've got my channel one and my channel two voltages coming through separately. And again, uh, to hold down into that menu, if I scroll without holding, it's letting me choose options. And if I hold down, then it's gonna let me kind of actually do that. So you hold on a parameter to change it. I can also turn the grid in the background off or on. So again, just really um, some great little features and everything there. Actually, one thing that you'll see here is again, that, that dotted line, that's kind of your, um, basically your zero or your baseline. So you'll see that the what's coming out of the PAMS is only positive voltage. What's coming out of the dope per is positive and negative. So again, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna turn that grid back on. So we'll leave those there for now. And next, if we hold, we're gonna go to a new scope, which is basically an XY view. Uh, again, I've seen some people kind of do some cool uh, visualizations on here. You get some interesting kind of patterns going on. Uh, let me try to up the voltage on this and uh, maybe that'll make us more interesting patterns. But again, uh, since I've only got the PAMs going positive, it's only doing it on half the screen, but you're just kind of getting a basic XY thing here. So you can probably do some cool stuff with it. Um, but you know, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it is just kind of a, I feel like these things are mostly for show. <laughs> uh, you know, they're pretty cool, but you know, you can just start running this during the middle of one of your patches. If you had both two negative voltages on there, then it would cover the full screen and probably do some cool stuff, but you know, you get some fun little patterns there. All right, then if we hold that down one more time and we're in the top, we just keep holding it. We can go over to the tune knob. And so this is again, a really cool feature here um, where basically, you know, you just have a tuner. And so uh, what I can see here is if I can just drop this down and okay, so that this showing me that this is the note I'm closest to, a C. And then this little black uh, oh, vertical line is telling me that's how, that's how far sharp I am. So if I bring down my oscillator, and boom, we can get that right in touch there. So I'm just kind of tuning, uh, fine tuning the pitch of my oscillator there. Um, so that's really cool. Again, you can do that for both channels. Um, so again, really cool features there. Other things you can do is you can change whether your reference tone is uh, 440 or something else there. You don't really, um, it's a huge thing, but that's just if you're getting into crazy tunings or something. 
And if you just click this, um, so actually, let me shoot. Okay, so if you click this once, uh, now you're gonna see this little arrow is down here at average, and this is choosing between slow, fast, and norm. And that is basically how fast your tuner is trying to average responses. So um, I just leave it at normal. And that's pretty pretty much fine. Other thing to notice is when I click that, I go from the tuner to actual Hertz adjustment adjustment there. So again, I can bring that up here, and uh, I'll just you know go up a couple octaves here, and you just see your your Hertz frequency of your note. So if I wanted to tune that to a you know 440, I could just go in and try to do that through this menu here as well. So again, um, just another cool way you can kind of tune, just tuning by hertz instead of by notes. Um, and then again, to get back to the middle, you just hold this. Um, oh, and then the last feature, screensaver. You can come down here and you can adjust how long you want it to be before your screensaver goes on. I did not know this when I got this, and I was annoyed as hell, because otherwise it turns on to this little screensaver and your scope goes away after like a minute by default. Um, so you want some screensaver, it kind of saves these LEDs and everything, but... Um, yeah, basically, I would uh, I would recommend turning it up as the initial amount was a little low. So then again, come back here, and there we are back to our initial menu there. So that is the Zero Scope One U. Super simple, super cool little module. Um, so why do you even want a scope in your system? So really, the big reason that you want to get a scope for your system is that. Um, especially as you're new and as you're learning, the ability to see CV is super valuable. Um, you know, when you get a module like a maths or an envelope generator or a Pamela's new workout, something that's going to generate CV instead of actually like, you know, just kind of generating, um, you know, wave designs or, or basically different waves. It, it gets kind of confusing. I think that's the really hard part of modular is understanding CV. It's one thing to be like, oh, I can plug this oscillator into this effect and into an output and I can get a sound. It's another thing to understand CV, how that's working, how different um, modules work, how gate signals work, all these kind of things. And so um, it has been super helpful for me to learn how um, my various modules are actually operating, uh, which is often probably the, the biggest place that I use it, as well as it's also great for just demos. And then you can just turn it on here and it makes your videos look cooler. So um, really simple. Uh, I highly recommend getting a scope in your system. And also, you know, if you're going to need to tune your oscillators at some point. And so you get a tuner and a scope all in one in like one UHP space. Um, you know, since it's very inexpensive compared to a lot of the scopes out there are quite pricey. So highly recommend it. Check it out. The IntelliGel Zero Scope 1U. Hope you guys found this video useful. Definitely check one of these things out. Huge fan of what they've got here. Again, they partnered with VPME.de on this to create it. So I think these guys were like open source and then they paired up with IntelliGel to roll this module out. But um, it's really cool, really great module, works well, inexpensive, great way to learn, great way to get a scope into your system without dropping hundreds of dollars. So there you go. And until next time, follow the rabbit.